Hey guys, hope you're all doing well. This is going to be an unboxing video of the Nighthawk AC1750 Nightgear router. I just bought this on Black Friday for about $60 on Amazon. It was an, an offer. So I'm going to be um, unboxing it, installing it, going through the user interface, and uh, installing some basic settings on it to let you guys know how it works and specifically how it performs for gaming here we have the content inside the package we have the quick start guide which we will probably ignore we have another pamphlet we have the router itself this is the netgear nighthawk okay and we have a either cat 5e or cat 6 cat 5e cable ethernet cable we have the three antennas and we have the power adapter so fairly simple components we're gonna go ahead and set this up and check out the wizard how it is to set up and how complicated it is so we currently have our night gear router powering up we have the antennas plugged in we have one ethernet cable coming from the modem into the WAN port and then we have one cable connected to my laptop over here and we're gonna go ahead and start the configuration um, from this point forward I'm gonna be recording my computer screen as a tutorial guide and basic overview of how the configuration panel and user interface is alright guys so once you finish hooking up your modem to your Netgear and you finished hooking up a cable to your laptop the first thing you want to do is go into CMD and uh, what we're gonna type is a simple command called ipconfig and this command will let us know if we are receiving an IP address from the router if it's set up correctly so as you can see down here we have an IP address 192.168.1.1 and this is our current uh, gateway or the IP address of the router itself so you should be getting this IP address okay so to access the configuration page what you do is that you open a browser and you type in that same address 1.1.192.168.1.1 or you can go to router login.net um, it should work as well so so you can see it's asking me for a username and password by default the username and password on most, on most router is admin for the username and password for password I already changed mine so I'm gonna go ahead and type in my new password whoops I got it wrong and once you log in the interface is pretty simple itself um, it was limited in some features to my liking but as as we log in here the first step is the first time you put it up and you go to the configuration page is that it will detect the kind of internet connection you have and it'll scan and it'll make sure it's running good so if we're getting an internet ad, uh, IP address from our modem the internet will say good so it's in good status um, here we can adjust our wireless settings over here on the Wi-Fi and if we click for example attach devices uh, we can you can see a, a diagram of all the devices in your network that are currently connected uh, I'm gonna go ahead and block out these MAC addresses but you can see the device names to the right okay so let's go over some settings basic settings so wireless would come in here change your Wi-Fi name to whatever you want and change your passphrase obviously I don't mind you guys seeing this because you don't live anywhere near me and even if you did you just connect to my Wi-Fi so um, you have two frequencies 2.4 gigahertz and 5 gigahertz the idea behind that is that if one gets clogged or bottlenecked a lot of devices are connected to it the 2.4 most likely you have a secondary 5 gigahertz that will be faster and 
will be running on a different frequency. Now, let's go over to the advanced tab and uh, something that comes with this router is the quality of service, right? So we're going to go ahead and, and check this out. This was the feature I was a little bit disappointed with, but it, it did help somewhat. It's just, if you didn't know, quality of service basically allows you to prioritize bandwidth on your network based on device or service. So if you want streaming or uploading or specific laptop or your PlayStation or your Xbox to get priority over other devices, this is where you would do it. So first thing I went ahead and did was I disabled this enable WMM Wi-Fi multimedia settings because what this will do is basically prioritize prioritize video streaming or any kind of mobile activity on your network. So you don't want that because you want your wired devices to get priority, especially if you're gaming. Um, if you were using this router more for streaming purposes over your Wi-Fi network, then obviously you would want these enabled. I disabled them because I'm using my network mainly for gaming. Then I turned on my quality of service or QoS. I ran a speed test and basically this is my upload speed right now, but it does not let me adjust the amount of download speed or upload speed per device, which is kind of annoying because I'd like to uh, be able to basically dissect my bandwidth uh, across different devices and this doesn't allow me to. But anyway, just make sure you turn on uh, uh, access QoS on. Over down here you have QoS rules, which is the only QoS mode available. And uh, I like to do QoS by device. So you can see here on the right side, QoS by device. Um, and here you can, you can basically pick the device within your network that you want to. Um, let me go ahead and open the zooming in program so you guys can see better. Okay, so here we have the list of devices, PlayStation 4, Xbox, Chromecast. So basically what you would do is select the device, go down here to a policy, um, you can name it whatever you want. And the important thing is here on the priority list, you want to send it, uh, set this to highest, which means that this device will get priority over the other ones within your network. Okay. So once you add it in down here in the QoS rules, you should see it appear. So this is my Xbox and this is my PlayStation 4. Um, and you should be good to go as far as that goes. Now let's go check out some other settings. WAN setup. In WAN setup, basically this is any connection leaving your internal network or your local network. This is wireless access network. Now, tr any traffic coming in will get scanned and uh, filtered by the fault by this router. What this means is that there will be an additional delay, I guess you could say, in all traffic coming in because it's getting uh, scanned and filtered. However, that is done for security purposes to prevent your router from getting, or your network, excuse me, from um, getting any viruses or malware. So I recommend leaving this on Unless you're you're experiencing a lot of communication problems over the network, then you might want to switch this off. Something I do disable though is uh, NAT filtering. No, I don't disable it. I set it to open, right? So NAT is network address translation, and it is used by most online games. Um, you want this to be open, right? Because you want seamless connection between. Uh, the server and your game and I kept looking at the light like the camera was there but the camera is right here so go ahead and set this to open these are just some basic settings that you should go through land setup is where you would uh, change your address range if you wanted to I'm not really gonna get into that let's go to advanced setup here at the bottom 
looks like like my router is acting up, so I'm gonna go ahead and refresh it. Advanced, advanced setup, and we're gonna go ahead and go to port forwarding. Okay, and if you didn't know, ports are basically used by different services and and games and uh, anything you do online basically communicates to your router through a port <clears throat> so you want to make sure that the ports used by whatever service you want are open and accessible and that the you know it, it doesn't have to be requested constantly for permission to access from your router you want those ports just to be open for whatever device or service you want it to be open so here for example I have some ports open for Black Ops 4 which is the game I'm playing right now and for Xbox Live and for PUBG and uh, these ports are open specifically to these addresses which are the PlayStation 4 and the Xbox One so that means that for these devices these ports will be open um, port forwarding I recommend looking into that for for you know getting a better connection in whatever service it is that you're trying to use your network for um, that's basically it you want to make sure and this is very important that when you uh, first boot up the router you update to the latest firmware and that's probably the first thing I should have said but you want to make sure that this firmware here is um, is up to date when I logged in the first time there was a pop-up on the top or a little button that said update firmware I went ahead and did it because firmware updates fix bugs and issues and security risk and all that you can always go to administration firmware update and check for uh, the later the latest software I have to say honestly as far as the review goes that the router does function well for gaming and for streaming uh, overall range of Wi-Fi over the house has increased not significantly but has gotten better but as far as prioritization goes in traffic uh, and the port forwarding that works very well I'm getting a lot faster speeds on my PlayStation I went from like 70 megs per second to right now like 115 which is really good I'm getting more bandwidth even than my uh, that I'm supposed to get you know from my internet service provider so that's that um, I'm gonna leave the review here if you have any more questions about the router, go ahead and leave a comment or message me. Until next time, it's been Kevin. Take care.